Let's talk about passwords. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Today I want to talk about a topic that could get a little controversial, but hang in there with me. I think you'll agree that uh, maybe there could be some improvements in the way that you're handling passwords today. I have to give credit to a family member for the inspiration for this video. We happen to be talking about a bunch of different topics and we got on the topic of passwords and I started to explain proper procedures and you know, how, how he should be handling passwords for the family, etc. And he just lit up. He's like, man, I had no idea that it was that deep. He said, this is, this is something that's well deserving of one of your videos. So I, you know, just kind of, you know, had to kick myself. It's something that I kind of take for granted that, you know, with as much information as is in the news these days, uh, behind me, you see the Equifax breach from 2017. You know, I just assume everybody's aware that this is important and they know how to deal with passwords, but I, uh, I'm, I'm educated now. I understand that's not the case. So this video hopefully will help more people become more aware of um, proper password procedures and what's possible when you're not taking care of them. So let's get into it. So I'm going to make a statement. Here's where the controversy begins potentially. Chances are good, better than even, that you're not handling your passwords very well. To put a finer point on that, let me ask you to consider the following questions. Um, think about your bank, your phone, your phone company, your cellular carrier, your internet provider, uh, your electricity utility provider, your Amazon.com account. Think about the passwords that you use for those entities. Are your passwords more than eight characters long? Do your passwords contain upper and lowercase letters? Do they contain special characters? Do they contain a combination of all of those things? How long are your passwords? Eight characters long? 12 characters long? Less than eight characters long? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, you're particularly at risk. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you in just a few minutes. Uh, there are certain websites, certain entities that, quite frankly, limit the ability to create good passwords. <clears throat> I've seen some, um, I don't think banks are guilty of this, but uh, some entities where you are actually limited to a maximum of 12 characters, and you're also limited in the type or which special characters you can use on those sites. When I encounter those sites, I tend to look for other providers of those services because that is a clear indication of an organization that is not handling information security with any seriousness. You don't want to be a part of that business. Banks, utility companies, credit rating organizations, as you see behind me, they've all been breached at 
one point or, or another. I shouldn't say all, but a number of them have been breached at one point or, or another. What does that mean, really? When an organization is breached, typically what that means is the information store that holds user information, usernames, email addresses, maybe credit card information, the password that you use to log into that site, that information's been lifted from the organization and is now in the hands, <clears throat> excuse me, of the bad guys, likely for sale somewhere on the internet. You hear the dark web and things of that nature. These things go for a relatively pretty penny. Hopefully the information is stored in encrypted form <clears throat> in those information repositories. But even that, as I'll show you in a moment, isn't foolproof. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a website and I want to caution you. Don't go to this website and start typing in your information. That's not the intent here, but I bring this website up to let you know that there are resources like this um, that the bad guys are using to get utility out of your information. So this particular website actually contains a data repository that holds over 500 million, 550 million usernames and passwords that have been acquired as a, as a result of some of these breaches. An individual has put this site together to provide utility to us, you and me. We can use this site to determine whether or not our credentials have been compromised. Again, I don't want you to yourself go to this site and start typing in your information to see if your password's been breached because... Um, I'm not certain that using this website uh, isn't yet another vector to exfiltrate your information, so don't do that. Uh, I have a, a way that I'm going to demonstrate things that is uh, quite a bit safer than that. Now, <clears throat> with all of that said, let's go ahead and get into a demonstration of uh, what's possible. One of the things I said just a moment ago is that hopefully your information in these databases is stored in encrypted form. So I want to show you a little bit about what I mean by that in the following demonstration. This is part one of the demo. So let's say, um, let's say your password is the word password. If, you're, if that is the case, you need to change your password right now uh, or anywhere you're using that. But So we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to use a utility to get the encrypted form of the word password. All right, so we send that to a utility called OpenSSL ships with Linux and Mac OS. And here we have the encrypted form of your password or, or the word password, I should say, All right? So um, that's cool, not in plain text. Uh, somebody needs to break that, uh, hack that down to get the actual word. So has that been done, right? Or more specifically, has this hashed version of the word password been retained or captured? 
I think you know the answer is yes, but let's demonstrate how we go about exploring that potential. So I have actually written a little script called Check Password where I can provide this tool with a password and what's going to happen is it's going to go out to that site that I mentioned a bit earlier and determine whether or not the hashed version of that of that word in this case password actually exists in any of those databases that uh, have been exfiltrated from organizations. So let's go ahead and run this. So what we see here is, in this case, the answer is unequivocally yes. The word password has been found. It is in the list contained in the Have I Been Owned database. This is the exact hash of that password. And it's been found 130,999 times. So I repeat, you definitely don't want to be using the word password, even if you capitalized the P. But what if you got really sophisticated and you capitalized every other letter? Has that been captured? Let's try that out. Why, yes, it has. This is the hash. It's been found 404 times. Well, let's put the number one behind it. That, too, has been found 83 times. What about one, two, three, four? And that's been found twice. What about something like... Uh, football, but we're going to do the, the number zero for the O's and the at sign for the letter A. That too has been found 230 times. Hmm. Um, what about Carolyn 1234? Oops. That also has been found. Uh, how about one, one password, one, two, three, four. that particular combination has not been found in any breaches. You still shouldn't be using password. In fact, you shouldn't be using passwords that contain any words that can be looked up in the dictionary or easily guessed, right? So I think you get the point here. There's a massive database and, and the 550 million passwords that I mentioned, that's only a portion, a fraction of what's actually out there and available for purchase. So be very careful. Um, in fact, we're going to talk about mitigation strategies so that you don't end up on any of these lists in the first place. So what should we do? What's the call to action, so to speak? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, first call to action, you shouldn't be using your brain, the human brain, to create passwords at all. Uh, it's just, you know, you are inevitably going to create something that's easy to remember, right? You don't want to do that. For those of you on Mac OS X or IO and or iOS, you can let the platform create strong passwords for you. Anytime you're signing up for a new service using Safari, 
when you get to the password field, it's going to offer to create a strong password for you. Take that offer. Once it does that, it's also going to store that secure or strong password in your keychain, which is buried within iCloud and also protected by the two-factor authentication that you're forced to do for your iCloud account. So whether you're using your Mac or your iOS device, that information is now protected by two factors of, of authentication and likely one of those factors is biometric authentication, whether it's your thumb, your face, your index finger. Apple's done a really nice job of putting in a platform to help you secure this information. Getting yet another factor of authentication to add to that, get a YubiKey. Do a Google search for YubiKey or um, universal two-factor authentication, U2F, U2FA, and learn some additional possibilities. Learn about some additional possibilities for securing your information. For uh, those of you on Linux, Windows, and this also applies to the Mac, use a password manager. LastPass, 1Password, Dashlane, all of them are great. Uh, they give you the ability to generate super secure passwords. I have one example here in a screenshot. Uh, super easy to use. And um, this tool will also, tools like this will also remember those passwords for you. And when you happen upon sites that you've that you've registered with them will fill in the passwords for you as well. And again, uh, your YubiKey will allow you to secure the information repository within any of these tools. So again, stop creating passwords with your brain. Use the computer and the associated tools <clears throat> that have been designed to solve this problem for you. It'll go a long way in helping you avoid coming up on one of these lists. Um, you know, sure, your password may be in one of these databases that is compromised, but the complexity of your password makes it next to impossible, computationally impossible to crack. I'm going to link to a couple of other videos down in the description that will go into more detail about both password managers and the difficulty that goes along with cracking passwords that are uh, of any length and include special characters. Really interesting detail. I highly recommend that you take a look at those links. Um, great education. And that's it. That's all. That's going to do it for this video. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I look forward to uh, reading from you and you'll see me in the next one.